We've just heard that, uh, that uh, David Cameron, Nicolas Sarkozy and Angela Merkel have released a joint statement uh, calling for immediate regime change in Egypt. We will have uh, more on that statement as soon as we get it. But just to recap, uh, France, uh, Britain and uh, Germany all calling for immediate uh, regime change in Egypt. And for more on those uh, protests uh, in Egypt that have turned violent, I'm joined now in the studio by Majid Nawaz. Uh, he did spend four years in an Egyptian prison for his role in an Islamist group. Uh, he subsequently co-founded the anti-extremism advocacy group Aquilian Majid. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, you, you've been here with us on The Pulse uh, for a few days and uh, today is a very difficult day because having seen these protests that were very peaceful indeed uh, suddenly turn violent, I'd like to get your reaction to them and a little bit more insight into, into why this happened and and indeed who is responsible in your opinion for it? Frankly I've lost some sleep last night I'm, I'm so disturbed um, but I want to say uh, to everyone here that it's not unusual it was the same with Nazi Germany and the fall of Nazism and the fall of communism that there's a die-hard bunch uh, who follow the cult of the personality and who will fight to the end that doesn't mean that the people don't want change in Egypt it means that there is a cult of the personality around a leader who's been in power for 30 years we saw it with Hitler and we saw it with Stalin there are people who are willing to die to the end and still who glorify their rule and that will happen with Mubarak. But as we've seen with the joint statement that you've just reported, uh, the reasonable world are on the side of the people of Egypt. Now, why would Mubarak want to do this? Uh, what I fear is he's attempting to lay a trap. He's attempting to provoke the very present Islamist forces in Egypt, who uh -huh. are the most organized, uh -huh. into an armed insurrection. Now, is that the Muslim Brotherhood, just to yes, be clear? Yes, that's yeah. the Muslim Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Now, if we remember what happened in Algeria, mm -hmm. uh, the FIS, which was a brotherhood, philosophically aligned brotherhood group, won the elections there in Algeria um, over a decade ago, and they got 85 percent, and, uh, and the Algerian government refused to move, and the French government at the time backed them. What then led was a very, very bloody civil war, and the soft Islamists, the political Islamists, mm -hmm. metamorphosized into very, very violent and extreme jihadists. I'm th I think that Mubarak is attempting to, pro to provoke a similar scenario uh, in Egypt because what's allowed him to stay in power for the last 30 years is that he's presented to the world this binary, mm -hmm. that it's either my dictatorship or extremism. And for the first time the world saw that there is a third option in Egypt. There are democratic forces that are popular forces, the people's forces, that don't want either of these two choices, that they want democracy. And Mubarak is attempting to redefine the, uh, the rules of the game so he can go back to the old rules rather than these new rules that obviously he's not comfortable with. Indeed. And, uh, I mean, it, it, there was this idea that he was going to try and uh, hold on until September. Nobody really thought that that was a viable solution. What we are seeing now, um, what we are hearing, is that the uh, that the protesters uh, may well try to uh, march uh, to the uh, the president's palace. If that were to happen, and if uh, once again uh, the the Mubarak's uh, protesters and supporters fire on them, what role will the army have in this situation? Now? There is speculation that the army will not stand by and allow the people of Egypt uh, to, to be shot and, and attack like that. The, uh, let's remember that Egypt runs by, subs uh, the army has a subscription policy, it's a uh, it's mm. conscription policy. Yes. So people are obliged to join the army and that means that the people and the army are pretty much one and the same and they feel the same uh, sentiments towards this uprising. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the army will stand by and just watch the people get so attacked. So far the army have played a, quite a clever game being on the fence but the stakes have actually become an awful lot higher. If, if we thought that was possible a few days ago, they have now because human life is, uh, is at risk. Well, the army will be aware of the dangerous scenario of an armed uprising or an yes. insurrection. Happen. They will be very aware of this because let's not forget, Egypt has just come out of an armed insurrection in the 90s mm. by the very same militant groups that I'm now warning against. Mm. And they had the good sense in 1999 and 2000 to unilaterally declare a ceasefire. They declared a unilateral ceasefire against the uh, Egyptian regime, mm -hmm. against Mubarak's regime. And that's to their credit. Um, and so now, in response, uh, democracy was allowed to flourish, the people came forward. If this is not given a chance, those same groups are still present and the army is very well aware of this. It's very difficult, um, to, I'm, difficult for you to quantify this, but how much of the population is involved in, uh, in these uh, sort of extremist Islamist groups, those who would uh, perhaps take part in, in armed warfare? 
and, and, and how much uh, and what percentage just want democracy um, but actually aren't extreme Islamists? Well, what this uprising shows is that the overwhelming majority of people want democracy. They want uh, a people's uprising, they want a democratic Egypt, and they want a free and fair elections to elect somebody like Ayman Noor, Paradai, or any of the other, other options. Mm -hmm. uh, to give you an example of the level of Islamist influence here, mm -hmm. there's a 10-man leadership committee that's emerged from the opposition. Um, and, and I've got the names of all the people on, on that committee. There's only one representative from the Brotherhood. The other nine are from secular democratic parties. Some are liberal, mm -hmm. some are left-wing, some are socialist. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are all essentially uh, non-Islamist. And there's one Islamist representative, another man who was my former cellmate, Dr. Assam al Aryan from the Muslim Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. He's the only Islamist representative on that 10-man committee. And that means it's a 10 to 1 ratio, a 9 to, 9 to 1 sort of yeah. uh, ratio, a yeah, proportion. Yeah. We're talking about non-Islamism uh, in the majority here. Okay, well, it's a fascinating uh, and developing story. Thank you very much indeed for giving us some insight into it today. Thank you. Thank you.